Rio Tinto is down 10% year to day and currently offers a yield of 7.75%. But is it a buy now? We're going to find out the answer in today's episode. We're going to take a look at how they've performed over the historic basis over the last 10 years. We're going to take a deep dive into their financial statements, look at their revenues and how the bottom line, their net income has been effective, as well as their balance sheet with their cash and their debt. We're going to take a look at that dividend safety, find out whether or not it is unsafe or they are able to continue paying even after their most recent dividend cut. And as always, we will end the episode with our stock valuation. We'll find out the intrinsic value and with our margin of safety, what are acceptable buy prices. Now, let's jump straight in. Down 10% year today, a very nice dividend yield of 7.75%, but is it a value trap? Now, over the last 10 years, if you've been holding on to Rio Tinto, you have had gains of around 76% on share price appreciation without even reinvesting those dividends. Not the greatest, but if you are receiving a high yield, I would settle for this figure. Now, what we want to find out is how is their company performed their revenues over the last five years? Now, typically, I like to see 3 to 7% increase in terms of a slow, steady growth. We can see here they reported revenues on December 2018 of $40.5 billion. And if we look at five years, they reported in revenue of essentially 55.5 billion so there's nice growth over the last five years but when we take a deeper look we can see that from 2020 to 21 they had a really great year but from 21 to 22 it did drop now i'm okay with that if it continues over the long period to increase over the last five years it has but i would be looking for 2023 to see an increase and not another decrease now, there's that mirrored at the bottom line. So we're looking at their net income and we can see their net income has, in fact, gone from 13.6 billion down to 12.4 billion. Slight worry that it did go down from 2018 to 2019, but it has picked up and then it has increased, but then it has dropped dramatically from 21 to 22. So slightly irregular, something that I would keep an eye on, but the fact that it has increased over the long period and it has increased from 2018 to 2021 with a slight drop isn't the worst but let's take that into mind when we take a look moving forwards now looking at their balance sheet i like to do a quick analysis of their cash versus their total debt so when we take a look at their cash and cash equivalents what we can see here for rio tinto is that over the last five years their cash has dropped from 10.8 billion down in their latest quarterly report to 6.8 billion. So they have been using their cash, it has dropped. Let's take a look at how that has been in terms of their total debt. Now, Rio Tinto's total debt has in fact stayed fairly flat, not the worst, from 12.7 billion to around 12.3 in their latest quarterly report. But we will need to take a look in our financial metrics and see if they can continue to pay off that interest and pay that dividend. So dividend safety score sitting at 40, unsafe according to these metrics with a market cap of 107 billion making a mega cap. Now some key financial metrics, dividend streak at zero years, we'll touch upon that shortly. They did in fact cut their dividend in the last recession, so not a positive outlook if you believe we are heading into one. They also scored very poorly in terms of their sales during that period below the average growth rate with sales negative 26%. And their recession return was a whopping negative 71%, which trailed the S&P's negative 55%. So it does not look good if you believe we are heading into a recession. Now, for those that know Rio Tinto, know that the last year they cut their dividend by a massive 37%. Now, this does obviously drop their growth streak right back down to zero. However, over the last five years and the last 20 years, that dividend has compounded annually at a rate of 11%. So if they do manage to keep it up and start to continue to increase it from this year, then it would be nice to see them reach these 11% that they have done over the last 20 years. So quite a lot to think about at the moment. Currently, as mentioned previously, dividend yield theory states that a company is undervalued when the yield is sitting above that five-year average line, currently sitting at 6.45%. So this is one sign of undervaluation. Again, we don't look at any models in isolation. Likewise, the forward PE is sitting below the five-year average, so another sign of undervaluation, alongside their sector PE being significantly higher than their current PE. 
52 week price range purely just for information purposes it is trending more towards that 52 week low of 51 dollars it wouldn't mean it's undervalued if it was sitting here or overvalued if it was sitting there earnings payout free cash flow payout you know i always say it we only look at the free cash flow as the earnings is susceptible to manipulation through accounting but for those that like to look at that Typically, I like to see below 60% as it means there is room to continually grow that double digit dividend that we like to see. Now, for those that do like the earnings, it has essentially been around 60% over the last 10 years. So not too bad. It is projected to be 69% in the next 12 months. Free cash flow. Again, this is why I say it shows a truer picture. In my opinion, it measures the cash flow, the amount of cash a firm generates after reinvesting. And what we can see is it's above 60% from the last six years and it's projected to be 105% over the next 12 months, meaning they will be paying more dividends than that their cash flow will be generating, which is a red flag and probably could be attributed to why this is here at an unsafe score. So do bear that in mind moving forwards. Earnings per share, we can see here $5.50 in 2013, $8.20 in 2022. So it has increased over the last 10 years. But when we take a look, we can see a truer picture that it has actually, in fact, dropped from 2014 to 15 and from that point essentially increased. However, from 2021, it has decreased and is expected to decrease again in 2023. Free cash flow, $1.12 in 2013. doesn't It shows a better picture, in fact, because from 2022, $5.79, there is some nice increase. Unfortunately, it is projected to decrease, however, in 2023. So do bear that in mind. Sales growth, steady, moderate, again mentioned for the cyclicality of the business such as Rio Tinto. We can see here there have been some significant years of double digit negative growth expected in 2023, well the last 12 months in 2022. And we can see here a better picture, 2013 sales of 51 billion, sales in 2022 around 56 billion. So not only has there been not much growth over the last 10 years, but we can also see that massive dip which could be attributed to the cyclicality of the business. But do bear in mind, it hasn't grown its revenue that much since 2013. Shares outstanding, not much to say here. We love it when companies return excess cash to shareholders through share buybacks, but it looks like it's relatively flat, although they have bought a very small amount across the odd year here and there. Return on invested capital. If you've seen my video that I recently recently did on my seven dip golden dividend metrics you know i like to see 10 percent plus do go check that out it's very informative if you want to understand how i look for my stocks they have done over 10 percent for the large part of the last 10 years and in 2022 at 26 percent, that is fairly positive and one thing you could say that management are using and allocating their capital well operating margins for mining companies above 12 percent, which they have done year on year so that is positive Likewise, with the free cash flow margin, other than 2013, it is above that 5% that we like to see. So another positive for Rio Tinto. Now, one thing that I was slightly worried about was their total debt levels, but this does show a positive picture for Rio Tinto. We like to see below 1.5, and in 2022, it would take them 0.28 years to pay off all their debt net of cash on hand. And given that it has been decreasing from 2015 and is expected to be 0.31 in 2023, I think this is fairly positive and maybe a little reassuring in terms of that dividend. Net debt capital around 13% of the company's financing is from debt rather than equity in 2022. Now, before we jump into our stock valuation model, as always, smash the like button if you're enjoying the content and do hit that subscribe if you want to continue to see these lovely stock analysis videos and let me know your thoughts as we go along in the video as always if you want to grab yourself a copy of this model do check the pinned comment and description where you can put your own companies essentially through this model and find out what they would be based on your judgments and before we jump straight in if you do want to come ahead and do want to join us over here at the patreon do click the link in the description and pinned comment private discord access for like-minded individuals youtube content voting power for stock analysis videos choose what videos you want to be analyzed and real-time notifications of my buys and sales for Patreon-only updates. Now, jumping straight into the Graham's valuation model, Rio Tinto, $7.62, their earnings per share, trailing 12 months. One thing to note is analysts expect no growth. They expect negative growth, in fact, so we have a negative one here. And with the current yield on AAA bond getting lower and lower each year, sorry, each day, we can see here the intrinsic value based on Graham's valuation at $43.73, showing 
quite a significant overvaluation of the current share price. Now, moving on to multiples valuation, we have companies in a similar sector and industry. We have BH Group, Vail Tech Resources. Once we get the PE multiple through the stock price over the EPS, we multiply the average by the EPS of Rio and we get $51.13, again, showing significant overvaluation of the current share price. Now, moving on to the DDM, the dividend discount model, we've got the yearly dividends for the last few years. We can see the average growth rate has been just over 10%, which is positive to see. However, what we need to see is that two years ago, whilst it increased by around 50%, they did recently do a cut, which was very negative. Now, moving forwards, I'm expecting minimal growth. I put around 2%, even lower than inflation, which, as I say, you always want to be getting at least 4% plus, as that's the inflation rate in the US over the last 40 years, otherwise you're losing your purchasing power. So for me, I've gone for 2%, you could argue it's more conservative, and this gives a DDM price of $76.50, showing upside to the current share price and just below that 52 week high. Now the final model, the discounted cash flow model, once we've inputted the free cash flows and growth, essentially, whilst the average growth rate has been 37.2%, analysts are estimating very minimal growth to the future to the free cash flow sorry and therefore i've gone with a little bit lower than estimates and gone at nil growth this gives us our future free cash flows once we use the discount rate we get the present value of these future free cash flows add them together with the cash subtract the total debt arrive our equity value which we divide by the shares outstanding to give a dcf price of 89 dollars 21 27 cents again showing upside to the current share price and right up there at that 52 week high now, the intrinsic value is the average of the four models we've just gone through. Again, do like that video and do subscribe for continued content. The intrinsic value for Rio Tinto is essentially $65.16, with the current share price being around $64. So we're essentially saying that we believe the current share price to be around the intrinsic value of the company. Now, for those that are looking for a margin of safety of around 10%, your acceptable buy would be around $58. However, for me, I'd be looking at a minimum of 20% for a company that doesn't really have qualities that I would like to see when I'm investing in businesses, strong moats, really good projections, forecasts, good historical data in terms of their revenue growth and their future free cash flows and their free cash flow yields. So 20% would mean around $52 if you were also looking at that acceptable buy price, which is right there towards that 52 week low. Now, Wall Street analysts predict the price to have some nice upside over the next 12 months at $76.85. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you looking to buy this? Are you on the sidelines or are you looking to sell after that dividend cut? As always, have a great day and catch you on the next episode. Take care.